Hello, this is Adriana Maris reporting from Fits on the Go at the American College of Cardiology Scientific Sessions 2023 with the World Congress of Cardiology here in New Orleans. And I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing the esteemed Dr. Annapurna Kinney, who is the program director of the Interventional Cardiology Fellowship Program at Mount Sinai Heart, also the director of the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratories at Mount Sinai Heart, and Professor of Medicine and Cardiology at the Icon School of Medicine, Mount Sinai, New York. What an honor it is to have you with us, Dr. Kinney. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thank you for uh, interviewing me. Thank you. Dr. Kinney, we have heard about uh, your Yellow 3 study, which to me has just been a landmark study. You have gone through so many chapters of the yellow, uh, yellow studies, and today we learned about your Yellow 3. Would you be able to please give us an overview of what the study is about and also your findings? So uh, there is a yellow one, yellow two, as well as uh, today I presented yellow three. So briefly, in yellow one, we studied uh, patients uh, with obstructive disease who had positive uh, FFR. They were randomized to standard of care and um, aggressive therapy, which was rosuvastatin. There we found that when patients got rosuvastatin, their uh, lipid core burden index definitely decreased on aggressive therapy. So at that time, we learned patients should be on aggressive uh, statin therapy when patients have CAD. So in yellow two, we then realized how can we understand what happens in the plaque. So plaque has cholesterol. What really happens to the plaque? So we did the imaging, which was uh, OCT plus uh, NEARS, and then we did what is called as cholesterol efflux and went to the next step to deep dive, understand what happens in the genetic marker of this patient. So we saw that when patient got uh, rosuvastatin, their uh, lipid went down and fibrous cap improved. And that correlated with increased uh, cholesterol efflux. Means when cholesterol is taken out of the plaque, the, the way it is healing means the cap is uh, becoming thick. And then there were six genes that we found that were associated with this change in morphology. So um, that was an interesting finding. And from there, we went to yellow 3, where we used PCSK9. So far, we did with statin. So in yellow 3, we did PCSK9. And at this time, we knew if it's an obstructive lesion, you cannot leave them for a long time, because the other two studies were about eight weeks. So we wanted to study the plaque for a longer time, 26 weeks on a PCSK9, which was avalucumab. Uh, so we could not use obstructive lesion. We went to non-obstructive lesion. So we did the imaging, and then we gave them the avalucumab for uh, 26 weeks and redid the imaging. So important finding was that the fibrous cap improved, the so-called vulnerable TICFA decreased, as well as their lipid content went down. But still, we saw 20% of the patient did not uh, improve their fibrous cap or what we call the non-responders. So that is where I think this uh, our uh, analysis of the genetic markers will help us who responded, who did not respond and how we can personalize uh, therapy for a patient. It's been a great discussion and I just want to touch on a topic that you emphasize, Dr. Kinney. Um, precision medicine is something that we will see in the future of healthcare and your trial is an example of how trials should be integrating precision medicine and the investigation of genetic variants. Would you be able to tell us the reasoning why you integrated genomics into your study? So as a clinician, after uh, having uh, doing intervention, and then you tell the patients, uh, do lifestyle modification, they go on uh, good medical therapy, and then there is a still a percentage of them come back with MI, come back with new lesion. So they always ask me a question, Doc, why I am having this uh, problem? Why did I have this uh, heart attack again? So there was, if you look at the clinic, uh, the biochemical parameters and everything else is good, he's doing everything right. So I did not have an answer what to tell the patient. So that's the time uh, our group decided, let's go deep dive 
into this group of patients, understand what truly is happening inside their body. So that is why understanding the transcriptome, which is uh, the RNA level uh, and proteins of this patient to see what is it different? Is there something we can find out? Is there a biomarker we can come up with? And that way we can personalize a medicine, uh, uh, a treatment for a particular patient. This is all so interesting because your trial is at the forefront of how precision medicine will be integrating now these investigation of the six variants that your study uh, reported on. So again, such an interesting fact. And just to finish off this amazing interview with you, Dr. Kinney, um, what does the future hold for the yellow th studies? So our next, uh, we will continue doing the uh, transcriptomes and uh, the, the ana genetic analysis on uh, this particular uh, yellow three. And then we will like to do, a, uh, um, I would say, a comparison between yellow two and yellow three with regards to, your, uh, to the transcriptomic analysis. And we'll understand uh, how uh, you know, who are statin responders and probably who are non-responders, are they responding to PCSK9 so we can deep dive into understanding exactly what the transcriptome will tell us. So that, that is the future and then um, newer molecules are coming out so we will uh, continue our uh, yellow series. Amazing. What an honor again is to have you with us, Dr. Kinney. For more interviews like these, please visit our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com. Thank you.